good afternoon and a warm welcome to my friends. Let me know where you're watching from and I can already see some familiar faces. Hi, Joni. Will, great to have you here, Lou, and there's many more that are coming in. Today, we are going to talk about 13 ways to stay poor and unfulfilled as a hairdresser. Does that excite you? What I'm going to share with you is going to blow your mind because we're going to be talking about inversion thinking. So you're saying, hold on, Viv, what does that mean? Well, Charlie Munger, who is a billionaire, did a presentation on how to live a miserable life. And his strategy as he built his incredible empires was to work on inversion thinking, which was actually a principle that Albert Einstein used many, many times to problem solve. So today, we're going to talk about how to be a poor hairdresser. We're going to talk about inversion thinking and solving problems in reverse. And I have to tell you guys, this is a game changer. When I listened to this whole concept, I thought, oh my goodness me this why did i not think of this before so i know it's going to help you i'm very keen for you to write some comments and what you're learning in the chat because i'm doing this for you so our brains are better at finding problems than solutions how many of you could agree with that right <laughs> we are programmed to survive not necessarily to thrive solving problems in reverse is an incredible strategy and that's what we're talking about today. List all of the problems and then do the total opposite, right? The total opposite. And that's where it gets super exciting. So for example, you know, if you're single and you're thinking, right, what is my dream person? And you write out all the things that you don't want because you don't want to repeat of what you just had, you'd have a very different outcome. <laughs> Our brains are better at finding problems than solutions, and that's an absolute fact. Uh, clients usually know what they don't want, correct? <laughs> well, I don't want this, and how much you're cutting off, then they do know what they want. And how many of you could agree with that? Just let me know in the chat. Hi, Kim, and hi, Lindsay. Hi, Tracy. Um, so we are better at finding negative. What is not working in our career rather than what is working in our career? So just think about that for a moment. We could list so many things that are not going right. We're tired, our knees are aching, or whatever it is, we can give you such a huge list. But the list for gratitude, but the things that we take for granted, the things that just, they just go straight over our head until one day they're taken away. And I think probably the thing that we take the most for granted is our health until it's gone away. And that is really powerful proof that we are, we are very, very quick to focus on the negative instead of the positive, right? It's powerful. So what is your future self? When you're projecting into the future, what is your future self and who do you compare yourself to? So I'm gonna just be very transparent. In my entire career, in my entire life, I've never felt good enough. As a ballerina, I wasn't good enough. As a, a question, I wasn't good enough. As a hairdresser, I wasn't good enough because back in the day when I began my career, I was around industry giants. And it was just like so exciting to be around these huge guys, right, and girls that were just so genius. And I always felt so small and significant. And no one said, well, at least maybe you're climbing up the right ladder, right? Because if you do what they're doing, one day you'll be able to do what they do do, right? So I never felt good enough. I always said to myself, you've got to work harder, you've got to work harder, you've got to work harder. Sometimes killing the joy. And very often I was driven by my own failures. And that's not a beautiful way to live your life. So it goes back to what is your future self? And I think today in particular, with the influence of social media and all of the stuff that's going on around us, it's so easy to think, well, I'm doing quite well. And then all of a sudden you see a post from someone who's got loads of following, they're doing beautiful work, and then you do the comparison, you against a stranger, an influencer, and then you can feel quite small. But the ultimate goal is to compare against yourself. How do you better who you are day by day? And that's where the magic happens. 
So today we're going to talk about how to be a poor hairdresser. We're talking about it financially, technically, creatively, time management and relationships. So you pick the one that you want today. And I really encourage you to take screen captures and of course, make loads of notes. So um, I'm going to go through the 13 ways to stay poor, but stay to the end of this video and then I will give you 13 ways to be rich. <laughs> How does that sound? <laughs> Great, so now I've got your attention, right? <laughs> if you don't know who I am, I am Vivian McKinder, and I have been very fortunate to have trained some of the most famous hairdressers in the world. Um, I started an online business over 20 years ago, but I've been in the industry for over 40 years. Yeah, I started when I was two. Um, my passion is, is learning, and in learning, I love to share, and I now am so honored to work with amazing hairdressers from all over the, the country and help them grow and thrive, and it brings me so much joy to see that happen. So let's get to number one of how to be a poor hairdresser. Start tomorrow. <laughs> Making excuses. Now, I see this so many times. And then the saddest thing about this, so for example, I'll have someone say, well, Viv, you know, I'm stuck here, here, here. I'm not confident. And I say, well, listen, I can help you. Let's start. Oh, well, you know, maybe I'll do it next year. Or, oh, maybe I'll do it, you know, la, 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 la. And then the excuses come through. And then I say to myself, that means you're going to spend another year with the same problem that's only become more and more of a habit. And then guess what I hear? Oh, Viv, if only I'd done this sooner. Well, you, I can't give you time back. I cannot give you time back. So hairdressers who are poor say, oh, I'm gonna start tomorrow. Next one, how to be rich. Take advice from a poor hairdresser. Now there's something here that's quite interesting. I know when I was feeling really shy and insecure, I would go to like-minded people who were also shy and insecure. Because if I went to someone who was powerful and strong, I could feel very small and intimidated. And guess what? In their presence, they wouldn't tolerate me being shy and small. They'd say, step up. And maybe deep inside, I either didn't feel I was worthy of it or didn't believe that it was my thing that I could have. So it was amazing how that played out. So how to be a poor hairdresser? <laughs> Take advice from a poor hairdresser. <laughs> Fail and quit forever. So how many of us have failed once, but we quit forever? I see this so often when I'm coaching people in things they've never done before. I say, just be gentle on yourself. You're going to fail and then succeed and fail and succeed. And I've had so many little failures and big failures in my career but there's a passion that drives me and I'm not gonna quit. I will not quit. So fail once and quit forever is the recipe to be a poor hairdresser. Breaking your promise, sign up for education and not show up. How many salon owners will say, oh my gosh, Vivian, yes, I have somebody that's coming into the salon and the team say they're gonna come in and they just don't show up, right? So breaking your promise, who's the person who really hurts at the end of the day? It's yourself. I, it's yourself. So be mindful of what you say yes to. And it takes even more courage to say no. At least you're being true to yourself. So breaking promises, that's a, a recipe for disaster. Life is not fair. Blame others for our lack. Life isn't fair. Absolutely not fair. My parents did not both deserve to die of cancer at a young age. They were beautiful, amazing, amazing people. Life wasn't fair to them, wasn't fair to any of us, right? Life is not fair. But blaming others for our lack takes us out of the driving seat and we lose our power and we lose our motivation. So that's a very dangerous place to go. Number six, complain. Complain means to remain the same. Number seven, tolerate mediocrity. And I'm kind of the other side of this, where I am, um, they always say that the, the worst measurement of your performance is seeking perfectionism, because per perfect doesn't exist, right? So I tend to lean that way, which is quite dangerous, but don't tolerate mediocrity. Always giving your very, very, very best. I think that's the key to being more successful. Letting jealousy and envy take you off your success path. 
that means you're focused more on others than on yourself. And that can be such a toxic place to live. Our industry is full of jealousy and envy, is it not? <laughs> Number nine, make a mistake, repeat the mistake over and over again. And I see this so much. And what's amazing is when the person doesn't know they're making the mistake, but they're a little bit disappointed because the end result ended up being, being mediocre. I, I will see people making a mistake in just their, how they move their hands, how they don't use their mirror. Um, lots of little tiny things that compound over a period of time and then they become a habit that no longer serves you and that can be very, very dangerous. Number 10, make money but spend more than you make. Oh, but I want that nice new, new shiny thing. I think we're all guilty there, right? <laughs> Number 11, start new projects but never finish. Bounce from one shiny object to another. And I see this a lot uh, when I'm working with people. They bounce from one thing to another. I say, no, no, no. We're going to go step one. We're going to nail that. Step two, we're not rushing this through. And when I can hold the reins and help people in this way, I can then see progress. But those who bounce all over the place, they're busy, but they're not productive. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Struggling alone, not seeking advice from experts. And I've done that where I was too shy to let people know that I needed help or I didn't want to inconvenience somebody and I didn't want to bother them. And today the genius is you can have people in your life that you'll never meet because you can do it online. Uh, you There are books, there are movies, there's, there's so many opportunities to us for us today not to struggle alone. And that's really huge. And number 13, negative self-talk. So imagine if a person wants to be highly successful, but their inner mantra to themselves is, I'm not creative. I wasn't born under lucky star. I'll never be good enough. I don't have the passion. Oh, I like the confidence. Oh, I'm a has-been. I just, I don't know technology. I, I don't know these new things. I don't get it. I don't get the lived-in look. You know, why don't they comb their hair? Blah, 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 right? The, seg the negative self-talk. But the bottom line is, if we're not aware of that narrative and it's going on quietly in the background, how can we attract great things in our life? How can we, how can we be willing to have amazing things in our life? And that's really huge, isn't it? So I've spoken about how to be a poor hairdresser, the power of reverse thinking. We are wired to find problems. It's our primal instinctive reaction to survive. Now we have listed the negative. Let's do what's not natural and look for the positive. Are you ready? This is exciting. Start tomorrow. That's the old bit. That's the old mindset, right? Just do it. Find a way. When I'm going to go on a project and I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm just saying to myself, just do it, just do it, just do it. Find a way, find a way. And what I do know is that you have to energetically change before you can have the mental change. You have to change yourself physically, like just being here round shoulders and saying, yeah, I really should do it. That's not a power body position. But you have to be superwoman or Superman and just say, right, I can do it and I'm going to do it. So I always think of myself when I have to be the magician because I have these visuals of like I'm going to be a warrior and I'm going to be a magician. I just visualize myself like tall and I bring my shoulders back and it's like I'm, I'm, I'm taking that warrior stance. It's like I'm going to do it. And clearly we've all had clients who've been intimidating, right? Their hair has been intimidating, their personality intimidating, whatever it may be, we've all been there. And those are those times where those shoulders need to come back and say, just do it. What, the next one is seek advice from the best. So if you are a poor hairdresser and you want to be rich, don't go to another poor hairdresser. Seek advice from the very best of the best. I have coaches in my life, I have teachers in my life, I have a wonderful team in my life who are much smarter than I am. And so I have no problem saying, you know, what, how do I do this better? What worked, what didn't work? What ideas do you have? 
Um, I use my car as my university for learning. So when I get in my car, I listen to anything that's going to help me grow and blossom. So by the time I get out of that car, I want to be able to have a couple of things that I didn't know before in the beginning of the drive. I take notes because just listening is not enough. You've got to you've got to apply it, which is the big thing. So when I first came to America, I was dreadfully lonely. I just lost both of my parents and I was miserable. And I thought, well, I'll go to a different country and maybe it will help with my grieving process. <laughs> Clearly it was not a very good idea because I needed to really, I think, be, be more at home. But anyway, I came to the United States to build an artistic team for Trevor Sorby. And I got to work with some of those amazing hairdressers here in the USA. And I felt so sad. So I went to a bookstore and I saw some books on self-help. And I'm talking quite a long, long time ago now when the self-help movement was quite small. And so I bought one book on self-help and it was really good. And then I bought another one, then another one. And I just started reading these books. And I, and I said to a friend one day who was really successful and very clever, I said, it's strange. She said, I'm reading all these books on feeling happier and so on. I said, but they're not working. He said, well, Viv, you're reading them, but you're not applying them. Oh. <laughs> Seek advice from the best, right? Keep your eyes on the prize. When you fail, which you will do if you try something new, don't quit. Keep practicing and keep practicing. So sometimes I'll go out to Pinterest and I'll look at some clever little techniques out there. And I think, oh, that's really clever. And I see a technique done in 10, 10 seconds. And I think, OK, I have literally spent three hours trying to recreate that 10 second video. I've got variations of it and nice things, but not that. I don't quit until I get it and I think, right, now you've won. So that's very, very important. Breaking your promises, honor your promises, honor yourself, honor yourself. You are the one that has to go to bed at night with yourself. You may run all over the world, but you can't run away from self. So honor your promises. Life is not fair. So I always say surround ourselves with winners. And by that, you will be so much stronger. I always like to be the dumbest one in the room, not the smartest one. Complain. To complain means to remain the same. So mine's all about how do we find a solution? How do we find a solution? The moment I hear myself complaining, right, solution, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Tolerate mediocrity? No, that, that's not even in my vocabulary. I'd like to tear that out of the dictionary. Each day, at least a 1% improvement. Do you know the happiest people in the world are the people who have a sense of progress? So if you haven't got that sense of progress, then you're not growing and improving. But the danger with working on our own game is that we can get bored and then stop doing what made us successful. And when you look at, for example, athletes, athletes that are swimming in a pool, up and down, up and down, up and down to become Olympians. I mean, how different is the first swimming up and down the pool to the second, the third, and the hundredth? That discipline to keep repeating that discipline to that Olympic level, they have to overcome boredom in their training. So is it boring to do a bob 20 times, 30 times, 100 times? It could be. But if you want to improve it, then it's not. Let go of jealousy and envy. You know, there's always going to be someone that's doing more than you, et cetera, et cetera. But, but the number one thing is learn from the people that you're jealous and envious of and ask yourself, are you envious of their hard work or just the result? I had somebody that came out to stay with me and I have a lovely house here in the, in the Hamptons. And he said, oh, you're so lucky living in the Hamptons. And he was going on like this. And I said, do you envy my bills? Do you envy how hard I've worked to be living here? This didn't just fall in my lap. I've worked for this. That shut him up. <laughs> he was on the house guest again. <laughs> Make a mistake and repeat the mistake over and over again. Learn from your mistakes. Ask why. Mistakes can be the most incredible gift. Number 10, make more money than you spend. Listen to your bookkeeper. Measure and track daily and weekly progress in your finances. Number 11, start a new project and never finish. 
focus is so important in mastering your craft, as is discipline. If you look at the greatest performers in the world, their discipline is incredible. Again, keep your eye on the prize. Number 12, struggling alone? No, I have mentors in my life. I have coaches in my life. I have teachers in my life. This past weekend, I was a baby colorist and I did my first forehead of highlights because I was never trained in a deep way in color. In the beginning of my career, I was, but I became a specialist. So now I've decided at my ripe old age, I wanted to be a student. So I was a student in our color boot camp. And it was so much fun just to learn and grow. Number 13, negative self-talk. So, you know, just think about your world. I am creative. Every day I'm progressing. Just imagine that narrative going on in your head, consciously and unconsciously. I follow my dreams and goals. I'm relevant for what's going on today. So the only person who likes an excuse is ourself. So today I've shared with you uh, 13 principles. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please, in the chat, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're going to apply. We have lots of members here, um, members of my website. So please write to me and write to me and let me know because for me, it's been a game changer. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on our next uh, mentoring session. For those of you who don't know me, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and website. And, and it's my name, just Vivian McKinder. Thank you so much. And send you love. Bye for now.